All right, pre-calculus, getting back into uh, properties of functions. Um, the first part of the section, we saw linear functions and quadratic functions. And those are the ones generally covered in Algebra 1 first and then Algebra 2 again, obviously. But um, those are kind of the simplest functions because their domains are all real numbers. Okay, no asymptotes, no discontinuities, right? And, and discontinuity means an excluded value from the domain. Um, so let's look at a couple different types of functions today that we got to later in Algebra 2 last year um, that do have some domain um, restrictions, okay? And uh, the first one I want to look at is a radical function with the square root. Um, so let's say we have uh, this example here, the square root of 3 minus x and then plus 1. I put a little visual of the uh, graph using decimals there um, just to help us along as we... Uh, as we talk through these things. Okay, so if you take a look at the graph, right, the graph you can see the domain is not all real numbers, right? This thing does not go through all x values. And there's a reason for that, okay? And the reason for that is look where the x is in the equation, right? It's under a square root. So we know when you take the square root of something, right, you cannot take the square root of a negative number. So what that means to me, or to us, that 3 minus x under there since it's under a square root, it must be greater than or equal to zero, okay? It can't be negative. So if you were to solve that for x, add x to both sides, okay? Um, and, and just rewriting it the other way, okay, getting the x on the left side, this is actually giving you the domain, okay? x must be any number less than or equal to three because that's what forces the thing under the square root, right, the radicand, to not be negative. Okay, and you can see from the graph, right, it starts out at x equals 3, and it's going to the left. So all the x values are numbers that are less than or equal to 3. Okay, because again, otherwise you'd be forcing yourself to have something negative under a square root. So that's one trick for the radical functions, is take that term under the square root, that expression, and, uh, you know, and just set it greater than or equal to 0. Okay, now for the range, if we take a look at this graph... Okay, notice it's starting, it's minimum y value, there's a point right there, is at 1. That's coming from the vertical shift. If you remember things about um, shifting functions, vertical shift, horizontal shift. So the range of this would be all numbers, all y values that are greater than or equal to 1. Okay, now why don't we go back and just put these in our, um, our new, our interval notation. That's kind of what we're going to be using the most, um, just so we're comfortable with that. Okay, um, I would accept answers like this unless the directions are uh, specific about interval notation. But to be less than or equal to 3, but going back to the domain here, that means um, it's going from negative infinity okay, up to 3, including 3, right? Because it, it can equal 3, um, but you can never equal infinity or negative infinity, so that's why there's a parenthesis there. And then with the range... Um, it is from 1, including 1, so bracket 1 up to infinity. There's no maximum in a parenthesis because, again, you can never equal infinity. Okay, now with these, we have no asymptotes, okay? We're going to see asymptotes on the uh, next type of functions, the rational functions. Those will have those, um, but nothing here, okay? Do we have a max or minimum? Okay, if you think about this graph, think about the y values of the graph. Is there a minimum? Yeah, so the minimum, okay, y value again equals 1, and it occurs when x equals 3. Okay, so make sure you're, you're clear. The minimum is 1. Okay, if, if you write an ordered pair 3, 1, I mean, that's technically, I mean, that's the minimum point, but the, the thing that's minimized, we need to be clear, is the y value. Okay, and it just happens to occur when x equals 3. Now, for the um, the other things here, what do we have? End behavior, okay? So end behavior can be a little tricky at times, too. What we're going to ask ourselves is, what is happening as x is going to infinity? We're going to make some statement, okay? And let's think about that one, okay? On this graph, it has this, like, kind of like ending point right here, right? It, it doesn't go to infinity. x doesn't go to infinity, so that one, we could just say it's kind of not applicable. It just doesn't really apply. There is nothing going on on that end. But on the other end, okay, the other end of the graph, take a look as the, as the x's keep going to negative infinity, 
right? As x goes to negative infinity, you need to tell me what are the y values doing, okay? And it appears they're just growing and growing and growing, maybe not really fast, but they are actually, the y values are growing up to positive infinity. Okay, so that's end behavior. Um, and now this final one, this increasing, decreasing, it, it can be a little tricky at times too. If you think about this function, it's always going to be as, as we're going from left to right. Okay, think about how you read a word or a sentence, right? You start from the left and go to the right. So this graph, as we are going to the right, what are the y values doing? I'm just going to kind of trace over. They're getting smaller, 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 and then they finally get to a point where it ends, right? So this thing going from left to right is technically the y values are decreasing okay, over the entire domain, right? The whole time these y values are decreasing until it gets to like that that kind of starting or ending point there. So this is a decreasing function all the time. Even though when you draw it, you're probably going to be drawing this one from right to left because you would start out, if you drew this by hand, you would start there and kind of draw it this way. But as you read it from the left to the right, the y values are actually decreasing. Okay, so that's all the properties of that example of a radical function. Let's look at a couple other things negatives under a square root, right? That's how we found the, the domain in this free, previous example, okay? Because negatives under a square root are undefined. They're not real numbers. Okay, let's look at a, one other type of function, um, rational functions. So rational numbers are like fractions. Um, so rational functions are ones where you have a variable in the denominator, okay? And this opens up a new issue with uh, the domain and all that stuff. So if we think about the previous example, we had um, excluded values, okay, or restrictions in the domain um, because of, okay. In this case, the little uh, rule that we can't uh, get away from is that you cannot divide something by zero, okay? So if we see a function like three over x, okay, if x equals zero, that would give us an undefined expression, okay? So the domain of this guy here would be the x, sorry, it's a little sloppy there, x cannot equal zero because again, that would cause us to be dividing by zero. So the way we would write that domain, if you wanna say all numbers except zero, the simplest way is just write x cannot equal zero. Um, if you're gonna do that as an interval though, it would need to say all numbers from negative infinity to zero, okay, don't include zero, so parenthesis, and then we use u for union, which just means or. Um, we can start back up at zero and go to infinity. Okay, so that's saying everything negative infinity to zero, don't include zero, and then starting at zero again to infinity. Again, not including zero. Okay, so these differ, right, from linear and quadratics um, because again, the domain's not all real numbers, okay? Because you have that, um, that possibility of dividing by zero, which is undefined. Okay, so let's look at a specific example and uh, go through some more steps. Okay, let's take a look at one other. Here's another rational function here. Um, so again, as soon as you guys see this, you start thinking about, all right, the domain, right? This has an x in the denominator, so I'm automatically thinking, I know I can't have a zero in the denominator, so we gotta think about which x would make the denominator zero. So to figure out the domain restrictions, we're gonna take the two x minus one out and try and figure out what would make it equal um, zero. Okay, so if we solve that for x, add the one to both sides, divide by two. Okay, so x equals one half, that's gonna be your discontinuity. Okay, that's gonna be your excluded value. Um, so the domain would actually be all reals except one half, right? X can be anything else. One half is the only problem. So as an interval, again, that's saying all numbers less than one half, so negative infinity up to one half, and then all numbers greater than one half, okay? Just not equal to one half, okay? And in this case, that would end up being a vertical asymptote in the graph, okay? And we'll kind of get into some of this a little more, but um, if you're graphing this thing, um, you will see, I don't know exactly what it looks like without a, a calculator, but um, through one half, there's a vertical asymptote there, and then this graph would not cross through that.
All right, let's take a look at another example. So this one, again, another rational function. Um, let's, do some, uh, let's do some factoring, right? Some simplifying. So when you notice something is factorable, that's generally what you want to do. So if you remember on these, um, looking at the numerator, x squared plus 6x plus 8. So it always kind of works where um, you're looking for factors of 8 that add up to uh, 6, right? So um, in this case, the numbers 2 and 4 work. So x plus 2 times x plus 4, okay, would be a factored version of the numerator, okay? In the denominator, same, it's the same type of thing, right? A quadratic in, uh, in standard form, so let's try the same method. Factors of 4 that are going to add up to 5, okay? So x plus 1 and x plus 4, right? Okay, and that's just going to help because, again, the domain is going to come from values which would make the denominator 0, Okay, the domain, you know, whichever values make the denominator zero are going to be excluded from the domain. So I can see from, from just from the denominator, right? That's the only thing. So these two, um, I can see that when x equals negative one, and if x equals negative four, that would cause my denominator to be zero. Okay, so that means that the domain is all reals except negative one, oops, and also negative four. Okay, the domain's everything else, right? X can be anything else, right? The numerator doesn't matter, okay? The numerator can be zero, so X could be negative two. Um, it's just the things in the denominator. Um, now, the reason I did this example, okay, was to remind ourselves that when we reduce, right, sometimes you can simplify, right? There's a common factor, X plus four over X plus four. This thing would reduce down to X plus two over X plus one. So what that tells us is since the x plus 4 factor um, got canceled out, that means that here at negative 4, you will have a hole in the graph, okay, while when x equals negative 1, that's going to end up being the vertical asymptote, okay? So it may ask you to distinguish those when it talks about the discontinuities, um, the type and location. Um, that's what's going on with rational functions. The whole idea is that um, if the factor gets canceled out along the way, um, that's what um, produces a hole in the graph, okay? And we're not going to really need to be actually graphing these with detail right now. We're just kind of getting all the properties at this point. So um, that's kind of what's going on there. Okay, let's look at one last one. Um, let's state the domain and any uh, discontinuities in this one. So this one, I kind of threw everything at you, right? We got a square root function and we have a uh, rational function. So two things for the domain, for the excluded values, right? Excluded values is the same thing as discontinuity. Um, I know that anything under a square root must be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, that's one condition, right? That radicand, you can't take the square root of a negative. So when we solve that one, I know that 2x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 which means x must be greater than or equal to negative one-half, okay? Um, but I also know from the denominator, I can't divide by zero. So the denominator can't be zero, means x cannot be three, okay? So for our domain, let's put those things together, right? The domain is going to be x has to be both of these things. x has to be greater than or equal to negative one-half, and x cannot equal 3, okay? Any other number is fine, right? So let's just view that, just viewing the domain on the number line, right? So we have, um, here's negative 1 half, here's 3, okay? The domain of this one, all numbers greater than or equal to, but not 3, okay? But anything there as well. This is to show in the domain. This is not a graph of the function, right? The domain is all reals except 3 and that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 half. So the way we could write that, you know, the most, I mean, this would probably be the simplest way, okay? But to, if we had to do in uh, interval notation, it would be, again, starting at negative 1 half, including negative 1 half, all the way up to 3, okay? Close it off because we're not including 3 but then we're gonna pick right back up from three to infinity. Okay, so that would be the domain.
Um, in this case, the, uh, the three would be a vertical asymptote because it did not get canceled out. And that would be the, uh, that would be the excluded value. Okay, so this stuff over here, this was actually just finding the domain. Um, the actually, the excluded value is, is three because it's a vertical asymptote there. All right, so what you guys are gonna do um, for some practice on that table, um, you'll see numbers six through 15. Um, the six, seven, and eight are, are radical functions, so we should be able to complete um, everything on that except symmetry still. Um, when you get to the back though, the rational functions, we are only doing at this time domain, okay, um, the discontinuities, and the vertical asymptotes. Okay, um, we'll talk about all the other stuff um, later on. All right, thanks.